Yeah, I'm watching uh, El Apostol live. This is his video here. Um, Christianity takes another L. Uh, re, re, uh, another pastor goes full Israelite live reaction. So Apostle Tar is doing a reaction to that video. And, um, you can clearly see, uh, vocab Malone and I was cracking up because, uh, vocab Malone, you can tell like. Elder Pastor kept saying, "You can tell he's really hurt. the uh, The heat of the kitchen of the Hebrew Israelite <coughs> ministry is getting to old boy." <laughs> and he made a few statements, which is really a cry of desperation. And uh, I'm just gonna play. I'm gonna. You know, I already bring, brought the video back to where <laughs> El Apostol starts getting in on him. And, of course, I'm going to put my two cents in because I can do that. <laughs> Hopefully, it's edifying to you brothers as well as, and exhorting to you brothers as well as you sisters out there that really believe in this knowledge, this truth. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, what is it? Good news, glad, glad tidings. That's what it is. And see, if the if our Lord kept reading, kept continue to read uh the 61st uh Isaiah 61, it spoke about a certain nation or nations being under another nation, which are the which are the Israelites. And when it says free from the prison prisoner. Open up the prison gates, the house, whatever. I'm not going to go to a Luke 4. It was talking about the Roman Empire. So they were saying, the ones that believed in the Lord, oh, he's going to take down the Roman Empire. The, he, didn't, he, he is going to take down the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire, they didn't understand was the second leg of the Roman Empire. This is the new Roman Empire, which is also known as Sodom and Egypt, which is also known as Babylon the Great. Let's listen on. <laughs> See, they heights, they are in fact of the tribe of Judah. Now, I also want to state that you, how could you know that? And the funny thing is, these guys are used to run 2868, right? But the R2868 yeah. is not just to Judah. No, it's not just no. to Judah, it's not just about Judah. It's 70 AD, it wasn't only Judahites left. Uh, there in Jerusalem, it, um, it, yes, it was large. It, obviously, by definition, Jerusalem, southern southern kingdom. Ju Tell us something we don't know, vocab. We've been teaching it for the longest, and you probably got that from us. We've been teaching it for the longest that the tribe of Judah consisted of not just Judah as a tribe, but Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. They were also known as the Southern Kingdom. So you preaching to the choir, man. Now there are other Israelite groups, some Israelite groups that only teach, you know, is uh, all about Judah, you know. They also teach that um, uh, all the Israelites look like so-called black men, right? And we said this years ago, back in the Cornelius Council, way back in, in 1996, 1997, somewhere around there, at what was called the House of David. And during the Cornelius Council, we said not every Israelite is going to look like a so-called black man. I, in particular, I said John Schaff, because at that time, myself and Elder Apostle Ricard, we used to uh, watch those black, those so-called black exploitation movies. So, you know, me being... Uh, facetious at the council I said look not every Israelite but being facetious but but being truthful at the same time I, I said not every Israelite is going to come looking like John Schaff because at one time believe it or not they actually believed that that the only Israelites they would accept is 
uh, dark-skinned Israelites and, uh, you know, uh, light-skinned um, uh, so-called, you know, Latinos, Puerto Ricans, you know. If you if you even look like a so-called white man, you 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 know, you were looked with uh, you you get you got a suspicious look. Now we know the truth. We know that not every Israelite is going to look like a so-called black man. As a matter of fact, within the different camps of GMS all across the world, some of our members look straight up like so-called white people, and we said that way back in 1996, 1997. You know, we, we saw that in the spirit. The Ginnefelder passed on down. We saw that in the spirit, that you're going to have Israelites coming, looking like every nation where they were scattered. Okay? So going back to what the statement vocab made, we already know that, man. If you're talking about GMS, we already know that. That's why we say we have 100% truth. We already, we already know that the tribe of Judah that was mainly left in the land of Israel during the time of our Lord because the northern kingdom led by the tribe of Ephraim had already came here to the so-called new world. All right. And you only had a scattering of the northern kingdom left in Jerusalem during the time of our Lord. And this can be proven by the book of James when James wrote his letter, James being Yahweh's brother, when he wrote his letter, James 1 and 1, it, it, it starts off with, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greeting. So we already knew that you had a, a scattering of the rest of the tribes, even in the land of Jerusalem, and certainly in the land of Israel. But the majority of the Northern Kingdom came here to the Americas after leaving Assyrian captivity. And you can go in the book of 2 Kings 17 and 24, which goes into that. So to recap my statement, you know, reacting to what Vocab just said, we already know that the tribe of Judah consisted of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and even a scattering of some of the uh, members of the northern kingdom. Another example that can be brought out is you had this woman, Anna, who was also known as the prophetess. She was of the tribe of Asa or Asher. Asa is another way of saying Asher. So that's more proof. Okay, so let's move on. So he's not saying anything, we in particular, Great Millstone, that we don't know and that we haven't been teaching for the longest. Okay? The biggest tribe. Judah, Benjamin, Levi, the three biggest tribes. There mm -hmm. was a sprinkling of the other tribes. When you go back to what is that second, uh, second um, uh, Chronicles uh, chapter 30, you read about some of the tribes, including Eph some of the Ephraimites, that went back with Judah. There you go. There you go. That's so true. So wait a minute. So that's even more proof. Okay. There was some northern people. We see some examples of that. But, but we already know this. And we teach this. Now there's some Israelite groups that don't teach that. That's on them. As it is written, the, the Apostle Paul told Timothy to study to show thyself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's why we boldly proclaim, begin with Elder Pastor now, we boldly, boldly proclaim we have 100% truth. Because the spirit of Yahweh Shemi Shah is dealing with us heavy, man. I'm talking about Great Millstone and our affiliates. Okay? Also had, uh, most likely, a Benjamite. Paul was a Benjamite, for example. He could keep. We ain't saying just Judah, man. When we say Judah, <laughs> we talk go. about the kingdom of Judah. There you Judah, go. Benjamin, and Levi. You know that. The kingdom of Judah, also known as the southern kingdom. We does our research, vocab. That's why when you gave your, your book, which I use it personally, I use it as a paperweight. Pretty good damn paperweight. When you gave your book, you, you bowed down before Apostle Tar. <laughs> Try to deny it. We got the picture. We got the picture to prove it. Okay, you bowed before him because you knew deep down inside. You say, "Man, I'm before a great man." <laughs> anyway, let's move on. You know that vocab. <laughs> it was lineage, and of course, um, you know the Levites would be mixed into. So it's like it's so strange to me when they. 
She's so strange. She's so strange. But we'll see. <laughs> this guy's hurt. They yeah. gonna have to answer. Yeah. He gonna answer to uh, his overlords. And yeah. then you know he says that as if all the groups are not privy to that information. We've been privy to that information, vocab. You're the Johnny come lately. Okay? <laughs> We've been privy to that information. We understand that it wasn't just Judah. It was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, also known as the Southern Kingdom. And you had a scattering of the other tribes as well. Okay? <laughs> Let's move on. Just take them to the back and work them on. Oh yeah, yeah. This 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 was funny. Let me bring this back. What the pastor was saying that was funny as hell. Yeah, they take him, take him, take him in the back and 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 give him a real education. Man, <laughs> Levi, you know that. You know that vocab. Yeah, I mean, I mean his uh, handlers, because we got to qualify everything we say. The guy, the guys that vocab works for, the the. The puppet masters that got their hand in his back, you know, he he ain't he ain't doing the job, man. <laughs> All right, so eventually, that's the joke that the pastor was saying. Eventually, they're gonna take him in the back and give him a real education, you know, his, his uh, puppet master handlers. Cause make no mistake about it, vocab is doing that. Whatever you know, the sh the little shtick that he's doing, he's doing it for uh, this. He's He's doing it for someone. It's part of an agenda. He's not doing this shit for free. Okay? He's He's been hired. As a matter of fact, you go in the book of Ezra, right? The fourth chapter. When uh, Now remember, Romans 15 and 4 says whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, right? Now you go in the book of Ezra, the fourth chapter. Remember when we were building, and that was us back then. You know, the Bible said there's no new thing under the sun. So when we were back there building... The physical temple, you had the other nations who wanted to be part of it. And we said, no, you can't be part of it. Only Israelites can build this physical temple. So the scriptures, so the scripture tells us that they hired counselors to frustrate our purpose. So fast forward to today, vocab is one of those counselors. All right. That's trying to frustrate our purpose. But like Elder Pastor would say, he's really adding to our purpose. <laughs> and it goes back to the scripture, uh, Job uh, 12 and 16, the deceived and the deceiver are his. So the heavenly father got vocab doing the nonsense that he's doing. That's why he's still around. But eventually the heavenly father, Yahweh through his son, Yahweh Shai, going to get tired of his BS and you ain't going to see him no more. Okay. He's going to be an af afterthought. Okay. <laughs> And we've seen guys like Vocab. Man, I've been in this thing more than 30-something years. Pastor almost coming up on 40 years. Apostle around about 25 years, something like that. The bishops of Connecticut, more than 20 years. We've seen guys like Vocab come and go. There's nothing, there's nothing prolific about this guy, Vocab. There's nothing prolific about him. We've seen his kind come and go over the many years of us being in this ministry. All right? So, anyway, let's move on. Lineage. And of course, um, and it all goes to prove one thing why the Bible said the Lord is long suffering. As it is written, our power, Yahweh, through his son Yahweh Shai, is long suffering. Okay, so there you go. And and if you're gonna be a man of the Lord, you have to be long suffering too. You have to develop a long suffering spirit. You know, you have to suffer fools like this guy Vocab and other clowns like him. Okay, who try to tear down the ministry, which they will not be able to do. This ministry is only going to grow more and more and more. Because you know, Do you know why? Because it's Bible prophecy. It must grow more and more because it's Bible prophecy. This is the time where the Lord is gathering his people, as it is written, Zephaniah 2 and 1, gather yourselves together, O nation not desired. And then when you go in the book of uh, Baruch 4 and 37, Baruch 5 and 5, it tells you how the Lord is going to gather his people which his people are the Israelites. He's going to gather them by the word. He Also, you go in the prophecy, it says in the latter days, the Lord's going to raise up his prophets that are going to prophesy this word. And at the same time, prophesy the downfall of this place called uh, Babylon, which is America. Okay, Babylon the Great. 
which is which pretty much is America. America is this Babylon the Great. Okay, we're in the time of, of some serious prophecy. All right, so let's move on. You know, the Levites would be mixed into. So it's like, it's so strange to me when they. It's just so strange. It's so strange to me. But let's see. <laughs> this guy's hurt. Yeah. He's he going to have to answer. He's going to answer to uh, his overlords. They might just take <laughs> him to the back and work him <laughs> off. <laughs> he kept saying it's so strange to me. Hey, you ain't seen nothing strange yet. <laughs> nah, you ain't seen nothing strange yet. As a matter of fact, let me bring in the scripture. Hope you're around to see the strangeness of our salvation. How about that? What we've been prophesying, that being the so-called UFO or chariot of the Lord abducting his people. And, and taking them into the chariots to escape the destruction that's coming. Okay? Now, if you're around to see that, now that's something strange. <laughs> it's so strange to me. <laughs> Our power is a strange power, man. <laughs> uh, what is this? First Peter 4 and 12. Let me see. Uh... 1 Peter 4 and 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. And that's talking about us. Okay? So we understand about things that are strange, vocab. So you made a statement, it's so strange to me, it's so strange to me. Now, you ain't seen strange yet. We know about strange. Okay? <laughs> Anyway, let's get back to the video. Work them over. We're having fun. We are having yeah. fun. We are having fun. Absolutely. Fun, 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 fun. Let me bring that. Yep. <laughs> like the song by the Beach Boys. Fun, fun, fun. Until the Heavenly Father Yahweh take vocab away. <laughs> and, and he'll have fun, fun, fun. Till the Heavenly Father take him away. <laughs> Borrowing from that song uh, uh, from the Beach Boys. I believe the title of the song is Fun, Fun, Fun. Till the daddy takes the T-bird away. Something like that. It's an old, oldie but goodie. Let's move on. Back on his, uh, he, you can see that he's hurt. Oh, yeah. This man is hurt. Yeah, he's, he's tired. He's hurt. His, uh, he's starting to really see that his work is futile. All right, because like the scriptures say, if this if this council be, matter of fact, let's go there. Acts 5, if this was of man, this would have failed. This really would have failed a long time ago, truth be told. Like every other religion that our people get into. And even when you check it out, in reality, even Islam and Christianity is failing. Every day, more and more people are becoming besotted by both religions. You know, people are live, leaving the so-called Christian church in droves. People are also leaving Islam because they're starting to see that it's it's all a bunch of BS, nonsense. You know, but you wait till when the Heavenly Father really magnifies prophets. Everybody's going to want to come on the Israelite train, man. And again, that that's uh, prophecy. This is the book of uh, Acts, the fifth chapter. Is, um, I'm going to read the words of Gamaliel. All right. That's somewhere in the... Uh, the yeah, here we go. This is uh, the book of... Um, the book of Acts, the fifth chapter. I'll start the, third, the 34th verse. It says, Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, and not all the Pharisees were wicked. You got these boneheaded Israelites calling us Pharisees as if Pharisees synonymous with being a wicked Israelite. These are individuals, these are these are low, low thinking individuals, all right? These are knuckle, knuckle dragon, knuckle dragon morons. <laughs> right? <laughs> low vibrational Israelites. Okay? You, you guys need to do some research. Okay, you need to do some more studying. 
not because uh, you see the term Israelite meant every Israelite, Israelite, not because you see the term Pharisee meant every Pharisee was wicked, okay? There were righteous Pharisees. The Bible is very clear on this. You, you had, there's a scripture where it said you had a sect of Pharisees that believed. Believed in who? Yahweh Shai. The Apostle Paul himself called himself a Pharisee of the Pharisees. So, so far I gave you, I gave you two examples. This Gamaliel over here uh, was a Pharisee. And he, he made a righteous statement. The statement that he made was a righteous statement. And he, and he uh, helped defended uh, Yahweh Shai's disciples. Because the statement he made, he said, uh, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do as touching these men. That was a righteous statement. So that, that, that's the third example. All right. Uh, the, um, the, well, that's the same Gamaliel. I was about to say Gamaliel who Apostle Paul learned under. He was a Pharisee. Apostle Paul himself was a Pharisee. Nicodemus that came to Yahweh Shai by night. He was a Pharisee and he was righteous. He was seeking the truth. And he went to the man himself, Yahweh Shai. But you, again, you got these low vibrational, knuckle dragon, moron, moronic, <laughs> moronic so called Israelites who don't do no research, who don't do no studying, nothing but parrots. They see the word Pharisee immediately. They, they, the first thing in trying in, to insult us, the first thing they call us is, oh, you guys are the Pharisees. You're the Pharisees. You guys really need to do some research, some studying, man, honestly. Anyway, going back to Acts, the fifth chapter, and the 34th verse again, it says, Then stood there one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. And he said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do as touching these men. Right? For before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain. And all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught, to naught, meaning nothing. Why? Because the Heavenly Father wasn't with uh, Thutis, and, uh, you know, Thutis couldn't prosper in what he was doing because the Heavenly Father didn't bless it. That's the point. Okay, now let's go to the next example. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him, he also perished. So again, um, as a matter of fact, speaking of the taxing, Yahweh Shai made a statement. He said, he said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar and render unto the Most High what is the Most High. Because they try to trap Yahweh Shai up in the taxing. You know, when you read about uh, that one Israelite that asked um, Yahweh Shai, is it lawful to pay taxes to the Romans? All right. Yahweh Shai said, look, you give the Romans, they're in charge, they're in power. You give the Romans what's due to them, but you also give the Heavenly Father what's due to him. In other words, you, you take care of business concerning the Romans, but you make sure you serve the Heavenly Father. That's what Yahweh Shai was saying, basically. So this Judas of Galilee, in a way, he, he, he was uh, going off. That's why his, his movement didn't prosper. That's why eventually Yahweh Bashim Yahshua shut it down. That's the point Gamaliel is making here. But let's keep reading. It says, after this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him, he also perished. And all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. Now, that's what Vocab thinks concerning the Hebrew Israelite movement. That's what he thinks is going to happen. He thinks it's going to perish and we're all going to disperse. Nah, buddy. <laughs> no way. Let's, let's keep reading. It says, and now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. That's the best advice we could give you, Vocab, to refrain from us and just leave us the hell alone. Okay, but you ain't going to do that. Because you have an agenda, you, you, you're working for whoever, your puppet masters, they got that hand in your back, 
and you really think that your your little your little shtick is gonna prosper. No, it's not. And you really think that you're gonna stop this Hebrew Israelite movement. No, you're not. Okay, this this you, you whether you know it or not, you're coming against the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. And plus this thing of ours is based upon Bible prophecy. We are fulfilling Bible prophecy. Okay? So again, Acts 5 and 38, and now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this, here's the point, for if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. And I most assure you, vocab, most assuredly, this counsel and this work is not of men. It is of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahushai. Like I said, we are fulfilling Bible prophecy. It is the time of the Lord raising up his people, the elect of the nation of Israel. Which, when Yahweh Shai comes, he's going to gather his elect. And we're being raised by this word. All right? This gospel is for us, is for us Israelites. All right? This is the gospel that it is written when it compasses the whole earth, then the end shall come. Okay? And we've seen that now. That's why all hell is getting ready to break loose. Because just like Elder Pastor said, and a lot of his brothers agree, the elect is, is, is being sealed or is very close to being sealed. Okay? The elect of who? What nation? The elect of the nation of Israel. The Israelites. And how are they being sealed? By this knowledge, by this truth. They're getting this knowledge and they're being sealed, meaning they're, they're being sealed with the faith to believe in it. And you can't stop it, vocab. You cannot stop this juggernaut of this Hebrew Israelite juggernaut. You can't stop it. Okay? So again, Acts 5 and 38, and now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. Best advice that, that you could possibly take, vocab, but you're not going to take it. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. Meaning, it's good. just like what you hope is going to happen, it will happen because it's not of, of the Heavenly Father and the Son, right? But the thing is, this Israelite ministry is of the Heavenly Father and the Son. As a matter of fact, it was started by his son more than 2,000 years ago. Yahweh Shai was the one that, that, that set it off. Like the song goes, set it off. Yahweh Shai was the one that set it off more than 2,000 years ago. All we're doing is continuing the legacy and the work of our Lord Yahweh Shai. That's all we're doing. We're continuing the work and the legacy of Yahweh Shai. Even Yahweh Shai made a statement. He said, Lo, I am with you, meaning us, even to the ends of the world. We're in the ends of the world right now. So the spirit of Yahweh Shah is working within us, man, to continue this work. So you better believe this work is going to be blessed, it's going to be made prosperous. And you will bear witness to it, vocab. You will see it with your own two eyes, okay? And you're going to be shaking your head too. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, which his name is Yahweh, his son's name is Yahweh Shai, you cannot overthrow it, vocab. That's a message to you. You cannot overthrow it. Least aptly ye be found even to fight against God. And that's exactly what you're doing, vocab. You are fighting against the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Now, I remind you of what happened to Saul, who became Apostle Paul. What did the Lord tell him from the heavens? He said, it is hard for you the Lord said this to Saul, who became Apostle Paul. He said, it is hard for you to kick against to kick against the pricks. And that's what you do in vocab. You're kicking against the pricks. The work that we do, begin to fell the apostle on down, that is not of us. That is of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. And you cannot stop it. All right? So you might as well just quietly go crawl back under the rock. Thus he came, you came from. And call it a day, my man. <laughs> hey, like the song by Fleetwood Mac. You can go your own way. You can call it another day. <laughs> a little off key there. But you get the idea. Anyway, let's move on. Likely, a Benjamite. Paul was a Benjamite, for example. He continued his lineage. Well, and of course, um, you know, the Levites would be. You know this, man. You know this. So it's, like, it's so strange to me when they. It's just so strange. It's so strange to me. But we'll see. 
It's just so strange to me. It's just so strange to me. <laughs> you know what's strange to you, Vocab? The truth. Like the saying goes, truth is stranger than fiction. Your whole, the, your whole belief, Vocab, is based upon fiction. All right? Whatever religion you're involved in, the majority of that nonsense is fiction. You believe, you actually believe, and even though you, you don't want to say it, you actually believe that God looks like a so-called white man, the son of God looks like a so-called white man. Yes, you do. You believe that. The angels, they all look like so-called white people. The, 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 the small hatters, the, the um, sombrero chiquitos, <laughs> the sombrero chiquitos, they all look like so-called white people. You know, you believe. That's what you believe. That's the, that's the cornerstone of your belief. Well, that's fiction, my man. That's fiction. Okay, and that's what you find it out. All right? <laughs> the truth, which is what we have, is stranger than fiction. You heard. You heard, okay, you heard, man. Yeah. And you're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt some more. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. By the time this by the time this, this thing of ours runs its, runs its course, that being when Yahweh Shai comes to deliver his elect, Man, vocab, you're going to be screaming like an Irish banshee. <laughs> All right? <laughs> and I know this for a fact, my man. I know this for a fact. I'm talking to you, vocab. You're going to be screaming like an Irish banshee. Okay? <laughs> you, hey, like, the, oh, man, all kind of songs is coming to me, like the song by uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive. You ain't seen nothing yet. But baby, you just ain't seen nothing yet. It's something you'll never forget. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet, vocab. Just hang on in there, son. You're about to see things that you won't believe even even while you're seeing it. <laughs> Your feelings is going to get hurt. Your feelings are going to get hurt. You're losing the battle, my man. You're losing, man. You're losing the battle. You, you The voice of desperation is laid upon vocab. You sound prophetic, man. Give just give up the charade, my dude. It's not working. Okay? Go back to trying to rap or something. Maybe there's still a chance. Maybe you can be the next Eminem, you know? Maybe there's still a chance. <laughs> Street apologist. Come on, man. <laughs> street. You don't even go out on the street. When I say go out on the street, man, you don't even set up a camp. All you do is 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 go is a uh, accost our camps, show up uninvited, show up unwanted, like a pest. Why don't you just set up your own camp and go out there and teach that nonsense that you believe in? Because you know nobody will really stop and listen to you, man. You know that shit. And what happened to the Shield Squad? Them guys, them 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 guys, uh. All them dudes that you came with when you invaded our camp un, 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 unwantedly, if that's a word, <laughs> right? All them guys that you came with, what happened to them? Sh uh, Sam Shimon, Sam Shaman the Pharaohs, Sam Shimon, whatever his name is, he called you a coward. So you know he, he, you know he ain't going to join up with you, Right? Your thing fell apart. You know why? Because it was not blessed by the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son. That's why your thing, Shield Squad, fell apart. Our thing is just as tight as ever, man. Okay? And it has to be because we're about to go into some real choppy waters. Okay? So this ship got to get real tight. The Hebrew Israelite ship. All right? <laughs> Let's move on. Is one of twelve. Yeah, it is one of 12. So what does he do with the other 11? I'll be okay. interesting. Yeah, that, that passes. He's not, not going to go that long. I mean, I hope he can, thinks he's Israel. He ain't going to go that long. He's coming in here like he's going to tell us what to do. He's coming with his yeah, old Christianity bottle. bullshit mixed. You can't put, as it is written, you can't put new wine in old bottles. That's an old bottle. All right. Leaking all over the, all over the place with uh hebrews he's coming like an authority nigga you you got to get to the back of the bus my man <laughs> yeah okay he ain't coming straight you know he and he's a he's a man of a particular age so he's gonna come come in 
with his experience. And he, yeah. he better not come around us because he's going to be put, look, nigga, <laughs> sit down. Yeah, go okay? sit down. <laughs> Cause we... Listen, pops, go sit down somewhere. <laughs> go rest them old, them old bones. <laughs> we are the HNIC, not you. The HNIC. <laughs> or the H... H I N H I I C, the head yep. Israelite in, in charge. charge yep, You're yep, not yep. the head Israelite in charge. Yep. The so you got H I I C, the H I I C. Okay. <laughs> you got to come like a like a, a new bottle, a wine bottle. See the pass is coming in like an old wine bottle. Mm -hmm. So whatever we get him. He's going to filter it. No, I don't see that. I don't see this. I don't see that. Yeah, he's going to be le leaking like a sieve. All right. Uh, as it is written, the Apostle Paul told Timothy to commit thou, meaning this knowledge, this truth, unto faithful men, which is able to teach others also. That ain't this old dude right here. That ain't now, him. Okay. If, let's hope you remain. That ain't him. All right. He's an Israelite. But, you know, the scriptures speak about, in Ecclesiastes, in the regular scriptures, 12, it speaks about the young man. Most are looking for young men. Yep. Not saying that an old man, older man can't come into this. Right. I came into this when I was a kid, in my 20s. Yeah, the reason why Apostle is saying that, because the old man tend to be set in their ways. You know, <clears throat> it's, um, it's not impossible, but... It's, it's, it's very rare to, even now we got old men, older men, I should say. <clears throat> we got older men within our, our our ministry, you know, the different camps. But it's it's not, the, the, you know, it's not, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not a common thing. It's an uncommon thing. What is common is for the Lord to call the young men. If you notice more and more young men are coming into this knowledge, into this truth, okay? Because it's not easy. It's, it's not an easy thing for you to come into this knowledge and this truth, man, okay? As you heard Apostar said, he came in, into it as a young man. I came into it as a young man myself. I had just or was about to turn 25 years of age when I came into it, all right? So... Apostle Ram, hell, Apostle Rakar, he came into it when when he was what, 17? 17 years old. All right. Him to say one tribe, he doesn't understand. The people that were in the western coast of the continent of what we, what we, what we, what we call today as Africa was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi and some of the other tribes That's from right. the northern kingdom sprinkled in. Facts. See, a lot, see the, the number one authorities are, the, are really the Israelites that came out of one west. In, per, in particular, in particular, GMS, because uh, Elder Pastor came out of one west, I myself came out of one west, Elder Apostle Rakar, Elder Apostle Ramlab, the bishops of Connecticut, we all came out of one west, one west 125th street. Well, it'll be interesting if he comes up with something. Where does he think they're up? What will they do? But here's the Hebrew Israelite. He's going to comment briefly on it. Let's see what he says. So this is a pastor from Florida. He's stating this. I wonder how much impact that had on this congregation. This is going to wake him up. So new pastors that slow. By the way, I wonder that too. You know, um, I don't know. There are videos of this pastor preaching. But it seems like a lot of his influence is online. When I looked last, he had fifteen thousand subs on YouTube. That's that's nothing to sneeze at. You know what I mean? That's I think most definitions would consider that I think what people call those days a nano influencer. Uh, I think I, I think I think they fit me in that category too, nano influencer. You know, the all these Yeah, because this knowledge and not every Israelite has it a hundred percent. You know, we had Great Millstone through the power and spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahshai. We, we have 100% truth. We actually teach this. But not every Israelite group has 100%. But nevertheless, they have some of the truth. Now, you're supposed to get all the truth, but they have some of the truth. 
So it's growing more and more. It's growing ex ex exponentially, if that's the word, exponentially, exponentially, right? And again, like I said, vocab, you cannot stop it. Like I read to you, Acts, the fifth chapter, uh, take heed, you know, but if it be uh, Acts 5 and 39 again, but if it be of the Heavenly Father, you cannot overthrow it. Least aptly ye be found even to fight against the Heavenly Father. And we know that this knowledge, this truth, is definitely of the Heavenly Father and the Son. And it's meant to be taught. It's meant to be um, It's meant to be uh, made public. Okay? As a matter of fact, one scripture that comes to my mind is Isaiah... Bear with me for a minute. Isaiah the 13th chapter. That's one prophecy that we're fulfilling. All right. Because we're supposed to make such a loud noise with this knowledge, with this truth, as it is written, make a joyful noise, that eventually the the, the wicked elite of this society, they're going to have to come and try to do something to us. All right. As a matter of fact, um, this is the book of Isaiah 13. Now, look at the subheading, Prophecies About Babylon. Now, we're in Babylon right now. The modern-day Babylon is America. There's no doubt. Even, even dime store scholars know that. So any, anyone who says America is not this modern-day Babylon, they, 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 they're not, they don't know Bible prophecy. They are not knowing the scriptures. They don't know Bible prophecy. America is indeed definitely Babylon the Great spoken about, in particular, the book of Revelation. It's definitely talking about America. America is known as Babylon the Great. So the prophets, the prophets and their scriptures, in, even in the Old Testament, that refers to Babylon, which is really talking about America, like this scripture right here, Isaiah the 13th chapter, Isaiah the 34th chapter, uh, Jeremiah the 51st chapter, Jeremiah the 50th chapter. The word Babylon that you see there is really talking about this Babylon, America, which the word Babylon means confusion. So, you know, part of our job, part of our ministry is to prophesy against Babylon, okay? And this is this is an example of scripture right here, uh, Isaiah 13 and 1. The burden of Babylon, which, does, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see, lift thee up a banner upon the high mountain. So this, this ministry is not going to stop. We're lifting up that banner. What is the banner? The Bible. We, we're showing these people out here, which, which are which is covered in gross darkness, like it says in Isaiah 60 and 1. We're showing them the real truth, the 100% truth, all right, that all these other religions wasn't able to do. That's what we're doing. <laughs> and you can't stop that vocab. <laughs> what are you, crazy? Lift thee up a banner upon the high mountain. What's the high mountain? Esau's government, in particular, America is this high mountain. The main... Uh, the main action of prophecy is taking place right here in America. It's happening all over the world. We got brothers teaching all over the world, prophesying all over the world. But the main stage of prophecy is happening right here in America. Okay, in particular, uh, New York. Okay, which New York is known as the Empire State. Okay, where did the truth come out of? The truth came out of New York, to be exact. Uh, Harlem, 121 West 125th Street, Harlem. Harlem, USA. Okay, lift you up a banner upon the high mountain, and and even when the school was was uh, back in the seventies and the eighties and going into the nineties, there was there was always trying to get individuals in the school to sell out. I can't tell you how many stories I heard of individuals from different secret societies of Esau coming to the school, <coughs> trying to get men to sell out. Men like uh, Elder High Priest Yaiqua, and he would he would show them the door. He would tell them to go take a hike, because he kept his integrity all the way to the end. Okay, I'm talking about Elder High Priest Yaiqua. Now, why would they do that if we didn't have the truth? The top wicked elite of this society, they know we have the truth. I always tell you brothers about the story about when we were out there on 44th and Broadway, and that limousine came up, and them dudes jumped out. Right. Them dudes jumped out, and, they, and uh, Elder High Priest Aria was telling us this, because I, I, I wasn't in the school at that time when it happened. But uh, 
Elder High Priest Ariel was telling us this. He said they jumped out. They looked at the signs. They said, how the hell did you find out? You know, we paid lots of money for you not to find out some shit like that. And they got back in their limousines and sped away. So it's, it's quite obvious that we have the knowledge. We have the truth. That's why guys like Vocab have been set up to try to uh, demonize us, debunk us. All right. But, it, but it's, it's as you, you know, <laughs> as you can see, it's not working, vocab. It's just not working. All right. So you need to quit while you're behind. <laughs> uh, Isaiah 13 and 1. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see, lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. This is what we're doing. Exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand, that they may go into the gates of the nobles. So this is where we're at with it now. This truth is going into the gates of the nobles. That's why, as of late, they're passing legislation to ban the Bible. Why are they doing that? Why are they passing legislation? For the longest, you could teach the Bible, you would be teaching lies on it. You could preach the Bible, you'd be preaching lies on it back then, back in the day, right? But all of a sudden now, Esau wants to ban the Bible. Why is that? Because of guys like us, man. Because of the prophets. Because they're, the people, especially the wicked elite, are starting to see everything we've been saying coming out of the scriptures is happening. They're seeing that their kingdom is, is coming down. Esau is seeing he's losing his power, just like it is recorded in the scriptures. Esau is seeing that the real, the real Israelites are coming back into power. The real Israelites are being exposed, which the wicked elite of Esau, they all, they've always known that we're the real Israelites. They've always known that. They have the records. They know. So now that they see us, uh, uh, again, um, how's that scripture go? Matter of fact, let me go to it real quick. Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. So these devils are getting scared. And you, you know, the scriptures say that they, that they would get scared. It is right here. Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter, the first verse. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness with those righteous men. Teaching this knowledge is truth. And we're standing in great boldness, right? Before the face of such as have afflicted him. That's Esau, the so-called white man who has afflicted his slavery, you know, his system, oppression, you name it. The, the police, you know, the police system, which is a form of oppression against our people. Hey, it says, then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. And Vokab himself is afraid. Okay, he's afraid, all right? When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. Now, earlier you heard Vocab kept saying, it's so strange, it's so strange. Now, you ain't seen nothing strange yet. Like I said, wait till you see, wait till you see the elect of Yahweh Shimei Shai being delivered by so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord, being abducted, if you will, taken up into the air, into those chariots, right? And at the same time, you, you, you're you going to have these nuclear missiles and you're going to have other chariots beaming laser beams of fire destroying this place, man. All right? And you very well may be, be, may be alive to see that vocab. You very well may be alive to witness that. And you're going to go out of your ever-loving mind, okay? <laughs> when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. See, that's why uh, the wicked elite is trying to put the, as they say, the kibosh on this ministry of ours. That's why they hired flunkies like Vokat, all right? And not just him, other individuals trying to frustrate our purpose, just like they did back during the time when we were building the temple, physically building the temple. That's history repeating itself. Like the Bible says, there's nothing new under the sun. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear, and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. See? So we know what that means. So far beyond all that they look for. <laughs> and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit. That's vocab. That, that, that's, that's what's next for you down the line, buddy. Eventually you're going to be repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit. Shall say within themselves, this was he? Whom we, whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach? Yeah. The way Vocab speaks about our, our ministry, our movement, he speaks about it with no respect. He called it a, a you, you're going to hear, hopefully I get to it in Elder Pastor's video, 
after I start running my mouth, <laughs> you're going to hear Vogab say, this is a, a bandwagon religion, some shit like that, he said. You know, then he said, oh yeah, he also said, this will pass in, in, in due time, this will pass. Is, is, is that really going to happen, Vocab? All right, we'll see. Time will tell. All right? Like this, oh, I keep thinking of these songs, man. Only time will tell. Was that the uh, Asia, the group Asia? Old, only time will tell. <laughs> You're leaving now. <laughs> only time will tell, Vocab. Uh, let's keep reading. It says, we fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. That's how Vocab looks at us. How is he numbered among the children of God? <laughs> Which is what we've been saying, that we're the children of God, that we're the Israelites. You just don't want to accept it, Vocab. You don't want to accept it, but you'll accept those poquito or chiquito sombreros. You'll accept them as being, as being the children of God, though. No, there's no problem with you. I don't see you cursing them out because they certainly don't fit Bible prophecy. There's so many prophecies they don't fit. It's not even funny. They don't fit Isaiah, the second chapter, where it speaks about when the house of Israel is established, which supposedly they established it back in 1948. All the nations are going to flow into Israel. Nations shall learn war no more. That all the nations shall go to Israel and ask about the laws, statutes, and commandments. We didn't see that happen back in May 14th. 1948. Meanwhile, there ain't no peep out of you, vocab. You don't say a word about that. And I've done videos on that myself. So we know you're full of shit, man. <laughs> but anyway, it says, how is he numbered among the children of God? Right. And his lot is among the saints. Therefore, have we erred from the way of truth? That's what you're going to find out, vocab. You have erred from the way of truth. And the light of righteousness has not shined unto us, has not shined unto you. And the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. That's what you're going to find out. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. That's exactly what Vocab's doing. All right? He's, try, he's, he's doing wickedness and trying to bring destruction to our ministry. He really wants to see us fail. But the only one that's going to fail is him. Okay? Case in point, he had that shield squad. Where's the shield squad? Huh? What happened to the shield squad? <laughs> We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, and that's that's what, now, now that's heavy. It says, yea, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way. The religion that vocab is involved in is just like a desert. There's no way. There's no way. There's no path. Okay? It's nothing but a desert. All right? But as for the way of the Lord... We have not known it. And that's what, that's what he's going to find out. Vocab, he doesn't know the way of the Lord. For goodness sakes, the guy don't even know prophecy. Okay, he made a statement in that same video. He said, because um, like I said, I was watching it, Elder Pastor, the video. He made a statement, Vocab made a statement. He said, I don't know what the future is going to bring. Something like that, he said. Well, hold up now. If you knew prophecy, you would know what the future is going to bring. We know what the future is going to bring. All right? We know exactly what the future is going to bring according to Bible prophecy. Because it's written clear as day in the scriptures. All right? So you don't know the way of the Lord. You don't even know the name of the Lord, nor his son. You don't even know what the Lord looks like, nor his son. You just lost, man. I'm talking to you, vocab. You just lost. All right? But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. What have pride profited us? And this dude, vocab, he's still proud in his ignorance. And what good have riches with our vaunting brought us. Yeah, I don't know how much money they're paying you to, to do the nonsense that you're doing, but that's not going to profit you. All those things are passed away like a shadow and as a post that hasteth by. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen to your movement, vocab. It's going to pass away like, uh, uh, like a shadow, okay? It's going to, as it says here, as a post that hasteth by. And as a ship that passeth over the waves of the water, which when it is gone by, the trace thereof cannot be found. <laughs> Neither the pathway of the keel in the waves. Yep. In other words, what this is saying, this is eloquently saying, is, is going to be as if you were never around vocab. When, when the Lord finally takes you out of here. Okay. It's going to be as if you, as if you were never around. 
All right, let's let's get back to the video. Bad for me for a minute. Oops. Yeah, seems I've lost it. Yeah, there we go. Must it? Oh, wait a minute. Did I miss the part? Tree must not. Hold up. Sodom in Egypt, which is also known as Babylon the Great. Do people become enemies of the gospel? I hope he's not on that track. Enemies of the gospel, you out. Uh, we already know what we we already know we got the truth. We don't have uh, to debate the truth. We already know we got the truth. That's right. Curses. Some of us made over here to slavery. Some of us died on the ship. Some of us rebelled on the ship and got killed on the ship. Some stayed over, died, and their next life went to slavery. So it's not one thing where all the Israelites suffered that same one punishment, that same one curse. Yep. So that's, that's vocab stretching. Again, we're not hating on this pastor. We're not saying he's going to hell. We're not saying, we don't go know to hell. all we're saying. You know how silly he sounds going to hell. You see, that's why people are le is leaving uh, that Christianity BS. It's supposed to be a place, and you got the devil there, supposedly with a pitchfork, and there's fire all over the place, and and you put into this pit of fire and you burn forever. <laughs> that's an old wives' tale, man. That's an old fable, and you still believe in that shit. <laughs> That's why we call you guys wacky tacky Christians. You have no idea, no understanding of the Holy Scriptures. Well, everybody goes to hell, which, which is, is the grave. grave. Yeah. We're not saying it. You, you want him to go to hell. We're not saying he's going to hell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. First of all, hell is the grave. That's another thing that goes over your, your head. Hell is the grave. And then these guys, they talk so arrogant. You go in the book of 1 Samuel 2 and 3, it says, Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Heavenly Father is the power of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. And this guy, Vocab, does not have the knowledge. That's why you just heard him say, We're not saying he's going to hell. What are you talking about, man? Going to hell? You still believe in that shit? Well, tell, do you believe in the, fa the, the, the two fairy too? <laughs> Maybe you even believe in Santa Claus. You believe in that shit too? Christianity, uh, Christ, so-called Christian people, they believe in that. Santa Claus. <laughs> oh yeah, you believe that Mary never, uh, never had a, uh, didn't have a husband. She, she was, she was, uh, how you say that, asexual. All right, that's what you, that's what you guys believe. Even though the Bible clearly says that our Lord came out the seed which is the lineage of David, the house of David. And clearly the Bible tells you that Joseph, his father, was of the lineage of David. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything to a wacky-tacky Christian. They're just bugged out. That's why, again, people are leaving the so-called Christianity, the so-called Christian church, in droves. Because it just doesn't make sense. It's pure horse shit, all right? That Christianity nonsense is pure horse shit, Okay? Go to the word hell in the New Testament and the Old Testament and go and, and use a thing a thing called etymology. Mm -hmm. Go into the root of the word and the word the word that you will come across is grave or pit or death. That's it. You don't burn in hell forever. The Heavenly Father is a power of knowledge and by him actions are weighed. You got to get the knowledge. Again, it's written, uh, what is that, Second Peter 3 and 18, I think it is. Growing grace and the knowledge of the Heavenly Father. All right. Uh, again, Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of that time. So you got to get the knowledge. The Heavenly Father deals with knowledge. A lot of our people, the Heavenly Father said in Jeremiah 4 and 22, my people are foolish. One of the reasons why the Lord's people are foolish is because they're wrapped up in that plantation Christianity garbage. That's the same garbage vocab is trying to push in our people. In other words, he's saying, come out of this 
what he believes is a cult, which the word cult just means worship. That's all it means. There's nothing nefarious about the word, if you know the meaning of words. Like you heard Elder Pastor mention the term etymology. If you know the etymology of the word cult, you would know it's not nefarious. It just means worship. Vocab himself is in a cult, a cult of stupidity. All right? There's a thing called a cult of personality. Okay? You know, his thing is, oh, get out of that Israelite cult. I got something better for you. That old plantation Christianity shit. No, nobody want to hear that shit, man. That shit, it, 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 look, our people are waking, is waking up to that nonsense. Okay? That, 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 it, it doesn't help our people. All right. That's and that's why so many Christians are leaving this fake ass, there phony you know. ass, weak ass Christianity. And it is weak. It's weak as hell. You want a grown man to believe that that uh, Mary didn't get pregnant by a man. He, he, she got pregnant by the Holy Spirit. When clearly our Lord Himself said that angels do not have sex. Angels do not have sex. Ask a wacky tacky Christian, well, how the hell did Mary get pregnant? They can't tell you. Mary got pregnant by her husband, Joseph, all right? That's, that's the answer. Joseph was of the lineage and house of David. Yes, Mary had sex with Joseph, okay? And that's how Yahweh was born. Which, by the way, Yahweh was the first child of the union of Joseph and Mary. And then... Uh, Following after that, Yahweh had brothers. He had four biological brothers, Simon, Joses, Jude, and James. And he had biological sisters. Now, the Bible don't mention the names of the sisters, but it mentions the names of, of his biological brothers. And they know they were not half-brothers. They were full biological brothers, progeny of Joseph and Mary. Okay? But again, the wacky-tacky Christian does not, does not accept nor under, does not understand or accept that. That's why we, again, uh, Proverbs 14 and 7, go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest in him not the lips of, oof, not the lips of knowledge. There you go. Goes back to the knowledge. The wacky taggy Christian don't even understand. Vocab, he doesn't even understand that it's impossible for the son of the, son of the heavenly father for his name to be Jesus. The letter J did not come about till 1524 by John Trasino. Okay, so how the hell can his name be Jesus? Even when you go into Greek, the Greek New Testament, you'll see the word Iesus. You will not, you will not see Jesus. Jesus is non-existent. You'll see the word Iesus. Iesus is Greek for Savior. Okay, it's Greek for Savior. Iesus Christos, Jesus Christ. Iesus Christos. Okay, which means literally means in the Greek, anointed Savior. Now. Going back to the knowledge, if you have the knowledge, you'll know that our Lord was not Greek. Hebrews 7 and 14, he came out of came out the uh, tribe of Judah of the nation of Israel. He was a Hebrew, and he spoke Hebrew. His name was given in Hebrew. When the angel spoke to, when the angel Gabriel spoke to uh, Joseph and Mary, the angel Gabriel told, told them, uh, gave them the name in the Hebrew, what to name their son. So the point is, for you to know the true name of the Son of the Heavenly Father, you'd have to know it in the Hebrew. That's, that's the truth. So Jesus doesn't qualify. Jesus is not Hebrew. It's not even Greek for that matter. It's watered down English. Okay? But again, these are facts that escape the wacky-tacky Christian, like Vocab Malone. Okay? Saying is, by the way, you need us. We don't need you. Facts. We're not seeking you out to have debate. You're seeking us out. Yeah, facts, which proves we have the truth. If you, if you, look, there's a scripture, it says, how's that go? Let them alone. If you perceive that we're blind, you're supposed to leave us alone. Right? Let them alone. Let me see if I find. It should come up. Yep, Matthew 15 and 14, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into a, into the ditch. So why don't, why don't you just leave us alone? If we're so blind, why don't us Israelites, why don't you just leave us alone? 
Again, I, I read earlier, go from the presence of a foolish man when you perceive in him not the lips of knowledge. We don't bother you. You bother us. You wear in the footsteps of our door. We're not wearing the footsteps of your door, vocab. We're not seeking you. We're not coming after you. But you keep coming after us, boy, because you, you, you're you part of that agenda. You know? Your puppet masters, they told you what to do. There's another one I was thinking of. Um, it's coming and going. Yeah, shake the dust. That's another one. Shake the dust. Admonition, let me get that one. Admonition. Yes, me, call that. It is right here. Uh, Titus 3 and 10. It says, A man that is an heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject. Right? So, after the first and second warning, if you perceive us to be heretics, right? after the first and second warning, you're supposed to reject. Why do you keep coming around us? Why do you keep buzzing around us like some retarded bug? Because you, you part of, you, you know, it's part of your agenda. Let's listen some more. Hey, just seeking us out. That's right. We already know, we, we already know we got the truth. We don't exactly. Have we, we, know, we, we know that we have the truth. We know that what we have is the truth. All right, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. We've been given the gift of faith. We know that what we believe in is the truth. Okay? So the question is, why does this guy vocab keep coming around us? To debate the truth. We already know we got the truth. And the truth is not up for debate. The truth is not for everyone, vocab. See, your, your piss, pissant religion teaches... That nonsense you believe in is for everybody. No, it's not. The truth is not for everybody. Well, maybe that nonsense you believe in might be for everybody, but the, the truth, the real truth, the 100% truth, is not for everybody. It's only for the elect. Let's get the scripture. Romans 11 and 7. We're not trying to teach. We're not trying to save the manatees. <laughs> Inside joke. We're not trying to teach everyone on the planet Earth this knowledge, this truth, because it's not for everyone on the planet Earth. It's only for the elect of the nation of Israel. It is right, right here. Romans 11 and 7. What then Israel have not obtained that which you seek it for? Even all the Israelites are not going to get on this go round, are not going to get all the truth. All right. Only the elect is going to get it. So how much more the other people outside the nation of Israel? They're not going to get this truth. Not every Israelite is going to get this truth. Now, I'm reading it here, Romans 11 and 7. What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, see, out of the nation of Israel, and the rest were blinded. That's the rest of the Israelites. So not even the straight up Israelite is going to get this knowledge, this truth. How much more a heathen outside of the nation of Israel? Come on, man. According as it is written, the Heavenly Father have given them the spirit of slumber. Oh, oh, so you mean to tell me the Heavenly Father blinds people from not getting the truth? Yes. Now, that's something that vocab's pissant religion won't teach. He'll tell you, his religion will teach you God loves everybody. <laughs> Which, by the way, that violates the sanctity of balance, as it is written. And I did a video on that. As it is written, a false balance is an abomination unto the Lord. How the hell can the Lord love everybody? That's not balance. You love and then you hate. Clearly in the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, it says a time of love and a time of hate. Clearly in the book of Malachi, the first chapter, the Lord tells you who he love and he tells you who he hate. He loves Jacob and he hates Esau. But again, these facts escape the wacky-tacky Christian because they're not dealing with knowledge. They're dealing with emotion. They, they, uh, the crazy, bugged out, warped emotion, that's what they believe in. They don't believe in the biblical facts of the Bible. They don't believe in the scriptures. They don't even know the scriptures. Okay, so how the hell can they believe? How are you going to believe in something you don't even know? <laughs> Romans 11 and 8. According as it is written, the Heavenly Father have given them the spirit of slumber. There you go. So the Heavenly Father actually blinds people from not getting the truth. Try that one on for size. Eyes that they should not see, 
and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And you know what scripture could back this up? Isaiah the sixth chapter, where the heavenly father commanded his angels to go out and blind individuals from not getting the truth. Again, you don't understand this Bible, man. You people out there, you have no idea what you're dealing with, man. This Bible is no doubt the most powerful book on the planet Earth. And it's only given, the secrets of the scriptures is only given to the prophets. Amos 3 and 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. There you go. And all the prophets were of the nation of Israel. They were all Israelites. Come on, man. Stop it. Just stop it. All right. According as it is written, the Heavenly Father have given them the spirit of slumber. Yes, the Heavenly Father blinds people from getting the truth, folks. And he does that by using the angels. That's their job. Eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David said, even David said, is it not written, David was a man after the Heavenly Father's heart? Even King David said in the Psalms, he said, let their table be made a snare. What is the table? That's a metaphor for this Bible. So when they try to get into this Bible, it becomes a snare unto them. Like vocab, when he tries to get into scriptures, it becomes a snare unto him. Let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. So when they try to seek the truth because the Heavenly Father have not chosen them, they're not part of the elect, they can't find the truth. They become bugged out. They end up in some BS Christianity nonsense. Okay? Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back all the way. There you go. And, and who's behind that? The Heavenly Father himself. But the wacky tacky Christian will tell you, no, 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 no. God loves everybody. Everybody can come to the truth. You keep believing that. Let's get back to the video. You need us. That when a Christian embraces Hebrew Islamism, first of all, they're believing a bunch of lies, frankly. When a Christian, the Christians, who are the Christians, vocab? Do you even know? The, the, the term Christian actually is Christos. In the Hebrew is Mashiach, which means anointed. In the Greek is Christos. The Bible tells you in Acts, the 11th chapter, they were first called, the Israelites were first called Christians in Antioch. The term came out of the city, of, the city known as Antioch. And it really was a derogatory term. Again, the wacky tacky Christian doesn't understand that the term Christian, which really derived from Christos, was really a, a derogatory term. It was a way of the Romans making fun of us Israelites that believed in Yahweh Shai. They say, hey, there goes the Christian, the anointed ones. And they said it with, with, uh, with, with um, disdain. Okay, but again, these facts escape the wacky tacky Christians like vocab. Okay? And this goes back to the book of uh, Deuteronomy 28, 37, where it says we would become a byword. Christian denotes Israelite. The only Christians were Israelites. So that was an example of us becoming a byword, Christian. And that came about during the time of the Greeks. Christos, which means anointed. The actual word is Mashiach, Mashiachium, which means the anointed. Mashiachium. In the ancient Hebrew, okay? But again, we became that byword, Deuteronomy 2837. That sounds hurt. The vocab is hurt. He's yeah. hurt. He's not he's not a happy camper. <laughs> and he's he's not sleeping good at night. That's why when he started messing with us, he became fat. When he first started messing with us, he was skinny. All of a sudden, he blew up like a... He blew up like a... a uh, he blew up like a, like a balloon. His face is all fat. He, that, he always had that fat head. It even got fatter. <laughs> and that's from messing with us, man. You know? When he invaded our camp with his with his shield squad, which which has as of late has been defunct, all right, maybe one, maybe two guys are still might still be with him. Most all of them dudes they they split. Even Doctor James White, who, who was closely associated with Vocab, even he distanced distanced 
himself, Dr. James White, distanced himself from vocab. <laughs> Dr. James White said, man, I'm out of here, man. This guy, vocab, is a clown. I, I actually thought he had sense. I, I think uh, I can clearly see now he's a clown. Let me distance myself from him. Okay? So your thing is coming apart at the seams, man. Vocab is definitely not a happy camera. He said, first of all, they believe in a bunch of lies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they're your lies. We don't believe in your lies. It's Jake that followed that believe in your lies. Yeah, we, we don't believe in your lies because we know the truth. All right. Uh, in the book of Malachi, the third chapter, it says we shall return and be able to discern between who serves the Heavenly Father and who does not. And we know for surety that you don't serve the Heavenly Father, Vokab. You don't even know the Heavenly Father, nor do you know his son. Okay, you're just totally lost. Okay? You're just totally lost. So should we follow you? Oh, hell no. Follow you where? What, to, to the ditch? You're, you're the blind leading the blind. Anyone that follows you, Vokab, they're just as blind as you are. So let them alone, like Yahweh said more than 2,000 years ago, let them alone, they be blind, leaders of the blind. If the blind follow the blind, both shall fall into a ditch. Come on, man. What what have we lied about? Exactly. You, you're not looking too good. As it is written, there's no lie, there's no lie of the truth. But you, Vocab, you've you've told plenty of lies. You you said that the Edomites were done away with. To this very day, what's the data today? Hold up, man. What's the data today? The data today is Friday, May 5th. To this very day, you have not successfully showed proof. Again, it's written, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21, prove all things. You have not successfully shown proof that the Edomites are done away with, vocab. But that's what you said. You said the Edomites were done away with. Where's the proof? Among the many lies that you've said. <laughs> You're a joke, man. You're not looking too good, vocab. Sure ain't. Frankly, you're looking bad. Yeah, you're looking bad. What happened to the shield squad? What happened to the shield? <laughs> you should get Scotty, man, from, from Star Trek. He can fix them shields for you. The shields, they can't take it no more, sir. The shields. Remember that show, uh, uh, Star Trek? Scotty was always talking about them shields when the, when the, doing this, Starship Enterprise used to get hit with them laser beams. And Scotty would start losing his mind. The ship can't take it no more, sir. The ship can't take it. The shields are down, sir. The ship can't take it no more. <laughs> what happened to the shield squad, vocab? The shields couldn't take it no more. Come on, man. Lies, deception, and they often turn hostile towards standard Christian orthodoxy. I don't mean... Mainstream white well, we don't, we don't, we don't have to turn hostile, because we know it's all BS. We just calmly and coolly and collectively disarm it, take it apart, dis dismantle it with this knowledge, this understanding, this truth. That's all we have to do. We don't have to get hostile, because <laughs> it's all BS, man. You, you come into that weak sauce, son. All right. <laughs> Every time you deal with us, vocab, you get, you get, I mean, you get cut a million ways from Sunday. Okay. There's blood and spiritually there's blood all over the place. <laughs> I mean, classic Christian historic orthodoxy. And you're not going to see it a lot in this video. But Class, if... Classic Christian historic orthodoxy. Yeah. Okay. To his longer video, which I have tuned up. You're going to see that exact thing. He literally calls it apostate Christianity. These things always go hand in hand. And a lot of times, that's what it is. It's bullshit. That's why so many Jakes are leaving. Because they find out, they're doing a study. They're sitting down and watching the videos. They notice that the Israelites, they hit, they'll hit. they say, make a statement, and they'll go ahead and preset. Mm -hmm. They'll make another statement, and they'll go ahead and another preset. Something, yeah. And that's something that you wacky-tacky Christians can't do. Whenever we go on your, like, case in point, when Vocab has a, a lesson that he that he's teaching that Christianity garbage. Just go on his live show and, and look at the comment board. You barely see a scripture, man. You'll barely see a scripture. Maybe in the if the show lasts maybe an hour, maybe after 20, 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, you might see one scripture. 
It'll probably be John 3.16, for God so loved the world. Or, G or John 11.35, Jesus wept. You don't see the scriptures, but when it comes to the Hebrew Israelites, in particular GMS, man, you see nothing but scriptures. Because we're endowed with the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Shemiel Shad, man. We've been given this word. The Heavenly Father only showed his word to the Israelites, man. Psalm 147, 19 and 20. And we know these scriptures, man. And if you don't think so, come test this waters, no? Come test me, no? <laughs> come test us, come test we, come test we, no? we know? Trying to get it right, man. Trying to get it right. Out of practice. Got to get, got to get back my Benjaminisms. <laughs> Psalm 147. Come test we, no? There we go. Come test we know. You don't think we know these scriptures? Come test we know. Y'all gotta find out we know these scriptures, man. Shit. Psalm 147, 19 and 20. He show of his word. Who's the he? The heavenly father, Yahweh. Through his son, Yahweh Shai. He show of his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. That's why we know this word, man. This is part of our blessing. He have not <laughs> He have not dealt so with any nation vocab and as for his judgments they have not known them praise you the lord and that's so evident when you watch guys like vocab and these other wacky tacky christians when you watch their live shows you barely see any scriptures just a bunch of emotions flying back and forth people's thoughts feelings and how they think and feel what about what how the heavenly father thinks and feels what about his word as it is written uh the heavenly father said um uh, let let him speak my word faithfully, All right? Let me uh, let me get that for you. I think the word chaff is in there. Yeah. The Heavenly Father said, "Let him speak my word faithfully, man." All right. It is right here, Jeremiah twenty three and twenty eight. Uh, Jeremiah twenty three and twenty eight. It says, the prophet that have a dream, let him tell a dream. Yeah, because like I said, you go on the comment board, these different, like, case in point, whack, uh, these different wacky tacky Christian sites, case in point vocab, if he does a live show and they're talking about biblical subjects, all you're going to see is people's dreams and and their own thoughts and feelings and their own BS. You, you never really see the scriptures. They don't speak the word of the Lord like it says here. The prophet that have a dream, let him tell a dream. The false prophet. And he that have my word, let him speak my word faithfully. And that's what we speak. Like you just heard Elder Pastor say, whenever we ask a question, we always go to scriptures. So much so that people get annoyed. They say, look, uh, no, close the Bible. I want to know what you think. What you feel. It ain't about what we think, what we feel. It's about the word of the Lord, man. It's about what the Heavenly Father have said. What he thinks and what he feels. It's just that you people, you have a problem with the words of the Heavenly Father. And that's why Proverbs 13 and 13 is written. He, whoso despises the word shall be destroyed. You people out there, you got a problem with the word of the Heavenly Father. Okay? Especially if it goes against the nonsense you've been taught in this wicked ass society. You got a problem with it. Well, guess what? We don't have a problem with any of the words of the Heavenly Father. We sop it up like a biscuit, man. We sop it up like a dry sponge and we're crying for more. We want more understanding of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. We want more of these words. You kidding me? <laughs> uh, it's like honey to us, man. Okay? Jeremiah 23 and 28. The prophet that have a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that have my word, let him speak my word faithfully. There you go. And that's going to be us. That's what we're going to do. We're going to speak the word of the Lord faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Right. The chaff is the fake, the, the unwanted, the fake the wheat is what what uh, uh, what the heavenly Father wants. The wheat, the real deal. Okay. Then he goes on to say, "Is not my word, is not my word like as a fire?" There you go. And that's why a lot of people they 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 are repulsed by the word of the Lord because it's like fire, and it purifies you, it cleanses you. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. There you go. So. You have to be a you have to be hard man to deal with the word of the Lord man. You have to be a hard man. Can't be no soft, effeminate p u s s y, and deal with this word man. You got to be hard man. Yahweh Shai, our Lord was hard. 
Matter of fact, Yahweh Shai was described in the word as an austere man. Austere is a hard man. That's a hard man. That ain't no soft dude. Okay? But a lot of you people in these wacky tacky tacky churches, you, you just as soft as baby shit. You're real effeminate too. That's why a lot of you are going to be destroyed. The Lord's going to visit your, your wacky tacky churches and he's going to set it on fire, man, with you in it. <laughs> Bunch of damn... Bunch of damn uh, metrosexual clowns up there in that whorehouse that you call a church. The Lord called, in the book of Jeremiah, the fifth chapter, the Lord called your church a whorehouse. And your pastor ain't nothing but a poverty pimp. And he's pimping you off your ignorance. Anyway, let's move on. Go ahead and another precept. And then you got Edomites that have come up, white, so-called white people, so you can understand, that have come up and they'll start just agreeing with us. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, because, uh, yeah, you know why? Because as it is written, the children of this world is wiser than the children of light. That's why. The Edomites, even though they're the devil and whatnot, at least they have a little more sense than the average so-called Negro. Okay, uh, again, it is written, the children of this world is wiser in their generation than the children of light. Who's the children of light? The Israelites. But it says the children of this world. Who's that? The Edomites. They're wiser than the children of light. Yeah. So the Edomites, after a while, they'd be like, you know what? You, you, you're speaking facts. You're speaking sense. Okay, you make more sense than those wacky tacky Christians. Yeah, you're speaking the truth. Then they'll walk away knowing they've been cut. That's happened to us sometimes. You know, at first we deal with Edomite. He, he's all belligerent. Then by the time we're done with him, showing him these scriptures, showing him these facts, that God don't love everybody, that the only people God loves is the Israelites, and et cetera, et cetera. They, they put their head down, they come to the conclusion, oh shit, that's the truth. And they walk away. But not the, not the average nigga, though. He just stayed there with you arguing back and forth. <laughs> that's why two-thirds of you knuckle-headed, knuckle-dragon niggas got to go, man. And that's pursuant to Zechariah 13 and 8. And the Heavenly Father going to do away with you. You're going to have to die and come back through the one-third that make it. Then you'll be in your right mind. So it's not looking too good for Christianity. Nope. <clears throat> People become enemies of the gospel. I hope he's not on that track. And what gospel? You ain't got the gospel, man. That old tired, weak bullshit that you're coming with, that's the gospel? What's, what's the good news about that? What's good about that? The word gospel means good news. You, you on Gelion in the Greek, I believe. That's not good news. That That's... that's that's uh, uh, fables, <laughs> what you got. Well, nothing but fables, man. It's not good news. These are the gospel. You don't have the gospel. Exactly. We have the gospel. That's right. It, it, matter of fact, the we have the gospel, the gospel of peace. The Lord has made peace with his people. Even though he cast them away, he's made peace with his people through the Prince of Peace, which is Yahweh Shai. That's the gospel. And Yahweh Shai only cared about his own people, the Israelites. Matthew 15 and 24, Yahweh Shai clearly said, I am sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Clearly that's written. All right. He told that woman at the well, you worship, you know not what we were. You, you worship, you know not what you know not what you worship. We know what we worship for salvations of the Jews. Clearly Yahweh Shai said that. Meaning salvations of the Israelites. It's all about the Israelites, man. Gospel pertains to the Israelites. Luke chapter four. That's it. When 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 uh our Lord pulled, opened up the scroll, he read from Isaiah 61, and it mentioned about the gospel, which is the good news, which in in Isaiah, in Isaiah 61, it doesn't say gospel or good news. It says glad tidings. Glad tidings yep. Which means good good news. Same thing, yep, good news. Like if a babe a, a woman gives birth to a baby and it's a boy, They'll say we got good news. Oh. Yeah, glad tidings. And it go uh, and again, going back to the sanctity of balance, because everything the Heavenly Father does is in a delicate balance. Again, quoting the scripture, uh, false balance is an abomination to the Lord. How can everyone receive glad tidings? How can everyone receive good news? What may be glad tidings to some might not be glad tidings to others. Okay, this is a thing called balance. Every work that the Heavenly Father does, he does it in a delicate balance. 
So there will be some people receiving glad tidings and some people will receive not so glad tidings. As a matter of fact, the glad tidings that are for some will be bad tidings for others. It's called balance, people. And that is something that the wacky tacky Chris Christian simply does not want to accept and understand. That the Heavenly Father does everything in a delicate balance. You have fire, you have ice. You have uh, hot, you have cold. You have fast, you have slow. You have up, you have down. Clearly in the Apocrypha, it tells you the Heavenly Father made everything by twos. You always have two sides to a coin. You got the head, you got the tails. Balance, people. And it's the same thing with the Lord's chosen people. You got all the other people created, which are not the Lord's people, then you got his chosen people. And yes, the Heavenly Father has favorites, just like you have favorites. You have a favorite dress, you have a favorite food, you have a favorite shoe that you love to wear, you have a favorite room you love to go into. You have a favorite song you like to hear? The Heavenly Father is the same way. He has favorites. That's why the Lord said his people are foolish. They have not known him. Jeremiah 4 and 22. Uh, I have glad tidings. Uh, what is it? Good good news, glad, glad tidings. That's what it is. And see, if, the, if our Lord kept reading, kept continue to read uh, the 61st, uh, Isaiah 61 it spoke about a certain nation or nations being under another nation which are the, which are the Israelites and when it says free from the prison, prisoner open up the prison gates the house whatever I'm not going to go to Luke 4 it was talking about the Roman Empire so they were saying the ones that believed in the Lord oh he's going to take down the Roman Empire the, he, didn't, he, he is going to take down the Roman Empire the Roman Empire they didn't understand what's the second leg of the Roman Empire. This is the new Roman Empire. Yeah, which is what we're in now. Yep. So, you know what? I'm going to end it there. Maybe I might come back and do a part two, see how the spirit hits me. But hopefully you were edified, you brothers and you few sisters out there. Hopefully you were edified by this video. And as usual, it's on to the next one.